Okay, today let's spawn and drive one of the vehicles that comes with Altera. So we can see some of the, uh, the more advanced keyboard uh, interfaces. The vehicles that I'm explaining how to create and bring into Altera, they're just the bare bones minimum to drive around, which from an animating standpoint, that may be enough to give a perspective in three-dimensional space that, that we would have a hard time getting in, a, in an animation package. And as you drive through a three-dimensional space, you know, all of the elements that, that animators struggle to achieve, like uh, parallax and uh, the, you know, different views of things as you drive by, uh, the, the, it all happens automatically in a 3D space, which is one of the big advantages of using something like Altera for a scene in which your stories uh, can happen. You know, we, we just automatically inherit things that would otherwise be a lot of work. So, uh, in the previous message, I posted a list of keyboard commands, which are already programmed in Altera for vehicles. Now, the fact that they're already part of the key bindings doesn't mean that all vehicles use everything that's programmed. In fact, the, the whole key binding system is, is really, it's, it's really a pretty amazing thing, because they've set it up so that you can create uh, other uh, events. You can create new events that aren't even in that system right now and create a key binding for it so that you know literally you can you can create futuristic vehicles that have all sorts of features that don't exist in these uh, it's really a, a very amazing system that they have here and it's outside my the scope of my ability to explain it so i just um it's going to have to be enough for the purposes of this series to just point out the things that are possible and then let those people whose uh, curiosity takes them there naturally, you know, let those people pursue it on their own and, and discover it. Uh, so for now, let's uh, come up to the sandbox menu and we'll spawn one of these vehicles. And this is a nice Porsche. When you spawn a vehicle, you end up in the driver's position. And there are two other camera views, three camera views in total. If you press the C on the keyboard, one will take you out and press it again. And it's, and it's a second view outside. And they look the same right now when we're stopped. But when you are driving, uh, one of them um, will follow the car in, in, in like Z axis as the car drives. So it makes it a little easier to steer. And the other outside the car camera view um, you can position it anywhere you can rotate around the car you can watch it from the side which from a the standpoint of a, a video director that's really useful you can get uh, you can use that camera view to to achieve all sorts of uh, really interesting sweeping camera shots of, of whatever action you're trying to record so um, right now Let's look at some of the uh, the things that are not part of the the demos that I created for that like that small car import um, lights, for example. If we uh, press Shift A and Shift D, that'll turn turn signals on. So this is Shift A. You can see this car is programmed to use the turn signals. Shift D turns the other turn signal on, and it's a toggle. So if you press it again, it turns it off. Shift W is your emergency flashers. And we'll come around to the front. Okay, now from here, if you press L, the headlights come on. Control L will make the high beams come on. No lights, L, Control L. Okay, so there we have our lights off, lights on, then high beams. Okay, and also from the front, you can see Shift A. Shift-D, or your turn signals, and Shift-W is your emergency flashers. So they've got this uh, pretty well programmed all the way around the vehicle. Rotating around the vehicle by pressing the right, the right mouse button and dragging the mouse around. Okay, they've got it set up so that when you press E, it turns the engine on. They have multiple sound files so that it's not just one sound file all the time. So if I press E again, they have a, 
a uh, turning the engine off sound file, which is pretty cool. Press E again. Now it's interesting that they, they start with a, uh, a sound file that starts sounds like starting the engine, and then they go into a loop of an idle, an idle loop. Okay, and if you want to see how they do all this stuff, you can go to the uh, the folder. It's not in the same packages folder where you where your stuff appears, but I'll, I'll put a put a link in this in the in the message on, on the, un, underneath this video where the folder is where you can study the script for for this vehicle and, and other vehicles that come with Altera. So as is the case uh, in our other exercises we've used with vehicles, WASD drives the car around. W is forward, A is left turn, D is right turn, S is stop, and when you press R, that toggles reverse. So right now if I press W, I'll go forward. Press S, I stop, press R, and then press W again, and I go backwards. Okay, so I'm going to press R for forward again. I'm going to get a little bit better vantage point. We'll start to drive. And notice that they've actually got the sound files so that uh, you can hear the car change gears. Okay, now this is the camera view where even when we turn, it, it follows the z-axis of the car. Which is, is, is a good way to uh, good way to see where you're going, especially when you're turning. Oh, what the heck did I do there? Okay, F F is apparently turbo jump. Let's try that again. F. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, oh, they've also got like a uh, different, they've got different sound effects. If you, uh, if you brake hard on asphalt, it squeals. If you brake hard in grass, it has a that, that grassy sound you just heard. And notice that with when I take my uh, finger off S, the car will start to drift forward. If you press the space bar, it, it apply, applies the uh, parking brake. So it doesn't roll anymore, which is pretty cool. So space again to get out of the parking brake. Get back onto the road here. Uh, we, we've seen what it looks like driving from this camera view that's outside the car, but it stays lined up with the z-axis. Now I'm going to press C again to move to another camera view. And now we're inside the car. So let's see what that looks like when we drive. You see, they've even got the, uh, the dials program to move, which is pretty cool. And the steering wheel moves. Now I'm going to press C again to, to view from outside a third, a third location. And this, this location will not follow Z-axis when I turn. It'll stay at this, whatever orientation I set it. Which is uh, interesting. Uh, it, it lets you get some views for your, for your uh, videos that you wouldn't be able to get in other ways. Now from a standpoint of Not very good at turns yet, as you can see. Notice that that did not follow the car. Didn't follow the z-axis. Let me get back in. 
inside the car here. Or at least behind it. It's easier to anticipate your turns from this view or from the driver's view. Very hard to anticipate your view, your turns from that view outside the car that doesn't follow the car's axis. But each of these views, you know, when you're in this view, you can still move around. And each of these views are, uh, are useful from a video making standpoint. Are you hear there we've got that squeal, the brake squeal, because we're on pavement. They've done a lot of work on these scripts. Notice the physics on the car, how it dips when it turns, and whenever you put, put the brakes on, the front shocks absorb the forward motion and the car dips down. Very cool. Now, from a standpoint of doing the same thing in Movie Zoo, we automatically inherit the, the tires moving. You know, whereas in Movie Zoo we would have to come up with an animated texture which would be the same all the time whether you're going fast or slow. In this case, when the car stops, the tires the animation stops. When the car goes, if it's slow, they move at appropriate speed. When it's fast, the tires rotate at an appropriate speed. Uh, everything about this is better than the equivalent in just about any animation software. Now, another thing that you can do a lot of these vehicles originated on SketchUp. So you can probably find a car just like this or just like the other vehicles in the, uh, the export menu and download them and, and adapt them to MovieZoo so that if you need to use the same car in uh, another part of your story that's, that's being recorded in, uh, in MovieZoo or, or iClone or any other animation software, uh, you can do that. So um, this kind of makes it seamless, where you where you take your your car and your vehicle, or you could even animate it and bring it in to this environment and drive it like this, with your character behind the wheel. And if you were filming like this, you'd probably need to hide the fact, depending on your camera position, hide the fact that that, uh, that there's no character in there. But nevertheless, you can get an awful lot of really cool shots without actually having a character behind the driver's seat, behind the steering wheel, rather. This, uh, the scene here, by the way, is one of the downloadable scenery packages that you can get from the website, from the Altera site. This is called, this is the Talkeetna, Alaska airport. And you can just, you can download this and execute it when you come to this location. All of these buildings and the landing strip, it's all here. You can also use this airport to uh, uses a takeoff and landing place for, for aircraft. So anyway, that's, uh, that's a little brief overview of vehicles, the really nice vehicles that come with Altera, how they work. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you.